At the moment, I'm spending a lot of time on an app that is Next.js in the front-end and Express in the back-end, and the big requirement for this application was I need a data fetching solution that's super robust. It needs to have amazing error handling, I need to customize caching, and it should just have a lot of utilities built in. And the solution I went with is React Query. Now, a lot of people have asked me in the past, Josh, why not use use SWR from Vercel? And I think they try to accomplish the same thing and React Query as a very robust data fetching solution has worked super well for me. And that is super important because in this app you can create articles, it has a full Stripe integration and these articles are being streamed to the client in real time. And there are a lot of data fetching implications that come with that. So let me show you how you can implement a robust data fetching solution into your own React applications as well. To get started, we're going to go into any React application. I'm using Vite for this. And let's take a look at the data source that we want to fetch from. This is going to be your API in Express or your Next.js API route or um, Ruby backend, Python backend, does not matter. And let's quickly take a look at the data that comes back when we fetch this URL can do that with curl. That's a hundred block or little posts, I guess, that came back from this URL. And if we have a number after the slash, we just get, oops, we just get one back, just one post. This is the data source I'm going to use in this video to fetch from. You would use your data source. Now to get started with React Query, it is pretty straightforward. Do not be intimidated by it, really. It's very simple. Let's quickly stop the development server. And now let's install npm install or yarn add. I'm going to use yarn and that's going to be at tan stack slash react dash query. This is the dependency we need to install. It's finished installing. Okay, this is me editing Josh and I felt like I explained it pretty horribly in the initial video. And um, so what we need to do before we can get started fetching across our application is provide the whole app with a context. We can do that in the main, the root React file by saying query client provider. This query client provider takes something called a client and this client is what we're going to call a query client. It's not super important. You don't need to understand exactly what this does because it is just a context after all. And the query client is something that we can declare up here, a query client that is going to come from 10 stack react query as well as a new instantiation of the query client class that we can import invoke and then make accessible throughout the whole application by wrapping or app in this context provider that React Query requires. And now we are all done and ready to get fetching across our entire application. We can close out of the main file and now we can actually fetch our posts and display them to the user. And the way we're gonna do that is with something called a use query. But we are not gonna use a query for everything. In React Query, there's two things we're differentiating between, a use query and a use mutation here on the right-hand side. A use query is made for get requests. And the use mutation is pretty much for everything else. I guess you could also use the query for delete because you're not pass passing a body content in that. But if you wanted to do something like a post request, something like a patch request, that would all go under the use mutation. Use query is for getting data, use mutation is for mutating, for changing data. That's where, that's where the name is coming from. So first off, let's try just fetching information to get started. And to do that, let's go into our file where we want to fetch the data and say const an empty object because we're going to worry about destructuring later. And this is going to be equal to use query, an import that we get from tanstack slash react query. Now, this query takes something interesting that is called a query function. And if you fetch data the regular way, const post is going to be equal um, to await fetch. First off, you need to do this inside of a use effect to actually be able to await the fetch in the first place. And then secondly, the function, we don't need to await that anywhere. We can work with it kind of synchronously in, in big quotes because it's not really, but we don't need to worry about the await at the top level anymore. That is one main benefit of React Query. So we can define a function and this function is going to run every time we want to fetch data. In here goes the regular fetch. However, I prefer Axios. So let's quickly add Axios 
Axios is an HTTP client you can use instead of fetch with a bit cleaner syntax. And instead of you know fetching the data like this with a fetch inside of here, I'm going to say const data is going to be equal to await. And now we can use await. We're not at the top, top level anymore. We declared the query function as asynchronous. So we can actually use the await now. Import axios.get because this is a query right here. We're going to make a get request inside of here. And then here goes the URL. I've already, already prepared that. Let's just fetch the post with the hard-coded number of one for now. And then very important, after fetching the data, we also want to return it from this function. Now, this is not typed because React Query has no way to know what this type is. We do, however, right? We looked right here. Let's declare an interface. This only goes for TypeScript, by the way. If you're in JavaScript, do not worry about this particular step. It's very simple. Let's just call it uh, data um, and put the JSON string we got back in here, remove all the quotes to turn it into a JavaScript object and remove the double object notation. And now the user ID is going to be of type number. The ID is going to be of type number. And these two are going to be of type string. And if you're in TypeScript, you could just copy that interface and cast the data into that type by saying as data. And now when we destructure, that's why I put an empty object in the first place, when we destructure whatever we get from React Query, for example, the data that we get back from the query, we can see this is of type data or undefined. Undefined, the reason it is, is because it needs some time to fetch, right? It's not there immediately when the component renders. So first it's going to be undefined and then the data is going to be put in there once the query function has run successfully. Let's quickly test that out. Let's render out the data down here in our component and we can see, I think this is an, okay, no, this is just a single object. Okay, that works. So let's just render out the entire data by saying json.stringify data. Just put it all in there, go to our development server and see what happens. It's gonna make the request and that obviously only works when the server started. Let's go back, refetch, and we can see the data is there immediately. Okay, now that's not a huge advantage over the regular fetch API as it is, because after all, we're not making use of most stuff that React Query gives us. For example, we could also have an is loading, and let's just mock a loading state so you can see the full beauty of this. I'm gonna declare a little constant here called wait, and that is gonna be to mock a query delay. Let's await a wait of 2000 so we get a longer loading state so I can really show you what this does. So if we are loading, that is a property we can destructure from use query, from React query. This is not something we need to keep in mind ourselves. And this state is being tracked for us depending on the state of the function that you pass in. That is a major benefit. We can say if is loading, then we want to render out um, content is loading and else we want to render out the entire data string. Now see what happens. It's gonna take a little bit once I load. Content is loading, it's gonna wait two seconds because we awaited that, and then it's gonna show us the entire data. Do you realize how cool that is? How much cleaner the syntax is? We do not need to worry about anything else. And same goes for something like is error, and we get a bunch more methods in here. We get something called a refetch if we wanted to refresh the data. And I think by default, the data is refreshed every time we revisit the page. So it's never stale. If I just switch back between tabs, the data is refreshed. Now, one property you will see passed very often into these queries is something like a query, something called a query key. And this query key is a string array. And the reason this exists is for caching. Now these are hashed deterministically, which means if we pass some values as the second parameter, for example, I'm just gonna declare a my var as an empty string and pass it in here. If we had multiple my vars we wanted to pass as the query key, all of them together making up the query key, the order of these would not matter. We could pass my var two, my var, you know, just zero without anything, or in this order, and it would not matter, it would be the same query key. And that is relevant for caching, because caching is based on a query key. And before showing you one really cool trick, how to make this 
code way cleaner, even more so than it currently is, let me show you how to use a mutation for making a post request because it is really straightforward. And I think the sun is making my face look really bright. Um, anyways, instead of the use query, we're going to use a use mutation. And if we wanted to cache that, we could use a mutation key. I'm going to omit that for now. We don't need that. And now instead of a query function, you're going to need a mutation function. I'm going to get rid of the weight. And because this is a mutation, remember, mutation is used for mutating or changing data. Instead of making a get request, we could make an Axios post request in here. And as the data, we could pass, um, you know, my val, just a, just a string. You know, that's going to be what we are going to pass in the post request body to this endpoint. Now, I don't think this endpoint takes a post request, but it would work the same way. And then we get access to whatever we get back in the data. So mutation is meant for post, patch, or changing data in general. And a query is meant for getting data. Okay. However, we can do something way cooler than this. Let's get rid of the wait function and let's abstract this into its own hook. We can do that by creating a folder called hooks and let's call this use dash post oops post dot ts. Now what we can do inside of this hook is very beautiful. Let's export a const called use post. It's going to be an arrow function and this arrow function takes a post ID of type number. We know this needs to be of type number because this this ID is expected by our endpoint as the post ID that you can see right here. It's uh, just a regular number and not a string. That's how I know this is going to be of type number. And then let's paste our query function. Let's change this back to a query function in here. And similarly, we need the query fn inside of here. And we also need to import that from React Query in order to work. We also need Axios and let's port over the data type because instead of declaring this everywhere where we are using this function, let's declare it centrally wherever we define the function, which is way handier. As a first step, you could try something like return data and is loading from this hook. That would work just fine. There is a better way, but let's leave it like that for now. Then we're going to make a get request. And also a get request means we cannot pass something as the body. And instead of hard coding this URL, let's dynamically insert the post ID in the form of a JavaScript template string that we get passed into the use post. We can save that and now switch back to our main component. So wherever we want to get the post, let's say const post is going to be equal to use post and we can pass it a post ID. For example, we want the first post. Normally this would be a dynamic value, but I'm going to hard code it for now. And let's destructure some properties. We know we can do that with data and the is loading. We know we can destructure those because we are returning them from the hook right down here. That's why we can destructure them. However, we can't get access to any other query properties except if we destructured them here and then inserted them down here, which is honestly totally unnecessary. Now, just very quickly to recap, this is already way more beautiful than it was previously. I mean, look at this syntax. It is beautiful. We can make it even better though with one very slight adjustment. Instead of returning these properties that we destructure, how about we return the use query itself because that is returning all the properties that we can destructure, right? So we can just return the use query. And if we save that and take a look at the data that we can destructure from the hook now, it's everything that the use query normally has. Is stale, is refetching, is previous data and so on. Now you can benefit from all of the use query features right where you call this endpoint or rather where you call the hook. The hook calls the endpoint and you call the hook. If we save that and take a look at if it's working, we can reload the page and see that it's not working because I left a small typo in here. Now let's refresh and we can see it is working. Great. And if it wasn't working, if we had a typo in here, like jasonaplaceholder.com, how would we deal with that? Now, the second big argument for React Query is the graceful ways in which you can handle success and error states. We can do that as the second 
um, it's not really an argument. We can pass it just into this big option object that we have in the use query. We can pass something like use success and also get the data that we fetch right passed into this callback, which is beautiful because now we can handle the success state accordingly. Do we want to refresh the page? Do we want to, you know, you can do anything in here. And same goes for something like the on error. We get access to the error right here. We can post a toast notification to the user um, so they know what happened in the error. And we have a couple of other options um, that help us keep track of caching. For example, there is the cache time you could use, super important, and a lot of other stuff. How often do you want to refetch? Do you want to refetch when the user reconnects on the window focus, right? Do you, do you want that? Do you don't want that? A lot of options that you can play around with that would go way beyond the scope of this video, um, but they are there and they allow you to really perfect React query to whatever needs you have in your application. I'm wishing you a lot of fun implementing React Query with all good things that come with it into your own React applications. Chances are, if you're wondering how to implement data fetching properly in React, you might as well like this video that's showing up on the top somewhere right now regarding a super cool GitHub repository I learned so much from. If you want to write better React code, chances are you also like that video. All right, that's it for me for today. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.